everyone. Uh, my name is Aditya. I'm a PhD student at New York University, and uh, I'm going to be talking about in total attestations and more for software supply chain security. And you know, whenever we do talk about in total, we always do a quick primer on what software supply chain attacks are. Uh, so a software supply chain, as I'm guessing most of you in this room are intimately familiar with in given, given everything that's happened over the last couple of years is uh, everything, the, the people, the artifacts, all of the different systems that come together to produce a piece of software. And an attack is a compromise of any of the many different things that came together in creating a software artifact, whether it was at, you know, the, the person, a, a, a human in the loop who was part of creating the software or compromise of a build system or something like that. And, and the attacks, and, and this compromise has to be you know, very targeted at compromising the consumer of whatever was being built, right? So this, the, 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 there's been a 742% increase. We've seen this number from Sonotype's last report on the state of the software supply chain. The number's probably going to go up, at which point we'll update these slides by probably around KubeCon North America, which is, when the, uh, which is around when the report comes out. And we've seen a lot of these attacks over the years. And we've, the, the internal team will used to track them. Uh, in what's called a you know a catalog of software supply chain security compromises, which we donated to the CNCF Tax Security Software Supply Chain Security Working Group, uh, it's it's really helpful, and I highly recommend you all check it out. It's been updated by the Tax Security Working Group uh, over the years, and uh, we used a lot of these inc incidents to try uh, to you know to drive the development of the internal framework. So. Yeah, definitely recommend checking this resource out. Uh, and as a response to all of these software supply chain security incidents, uh, we've seen many solutions emerge, which we can, I think, broadly categorize into three different buckets, right? We've, we've got projects that are focused on, uh, the, on, on generating various types of evidence of what happened during your software supply chain execution whether that's like prominence of a build step that you'd get with something like Salsa uh, generated from uh, your CI system uh, or, you know, uh, uh, the NPM logo I threw up today because of NPM's announcement from yesterday that they're, uh, now you can now generate prominence from during NPM builds. Or, you know, other forms of evidence can be your software build of materials, whether it's Cyclone DX or SPDX. This, the second category is various tools and systems that make it possible to uh, discover this information and to try and gain insights from uh, uh, the evidence that was gathered during a software supply chain execution. And, and finally, you've got tools and systems that help you uh, create policies and verify them as your software artifacts being consumed at some point. And in total is like the common link between all of these different categories of software supply chain security solutions. You can express your uh, different types of evidence as in Toto metadata in a, in a, in a more you know, uh, consistent manner so that it's easy to consume and easy to make sense of depending on you know, uh, what you're using it for. And uh, all of this evidence is then fed into information discovery systems, right? Uh, projects like Six Stores Recar can store in total attestations. Uh, Guac is using uh, in total metadata to try and gain insights about software artifacts, what, the artif what, what components are in a software artifact, and you know, Archivista, Grafeus, and things like that. Uh, and and you know, all of these can then again help you develop the policies you want to be enforcing when you're actually taking that software artifact and sending it to your end user or you know, an admission controller or whatever. And, and within, in the total world, that's what we call a software supply chain layout, right? And uh, that's, that's, that's how we see, like, you know, in total connecting all of these different categories. Uh, so yeah, the end user, the admission controller, whatever, you know, depending on the context, receives not only the thing that they were trying to get, the artifact itself, but also the in total layout, all of the evidence that was 
generated as the final product was created and uh, before actually using or installing or deploying that software artifact, we run the verification workflow to see that all of the evidence stacks up against whatever policies were created in the layout. So let's dive further into Intoto. Uh, we're an incubating project, and we're you know, trying to target CNCF graduation at some point this year. And, uh, to, and, and to that end, I also want to talk about two uh, major uh, changes that are happening within the Intoto framework. Uh, first up, I'm going to focus on you know, the evidence part of uh, what I just described. Uh, so the Intoto specification before and up until version 1.0 only really had one way to express some evidence of what happened in your software supply chain. It was called link metadata. It, was, uh, it, it tried to be very generic and agnostic of what was happening. It captured the input artifacts that you know, went into a particular software supply chain step and it recorded what came out of that particular step. And it was, it was, it was you know, cryptographically signed and, and, and all of that. But uh, we realized that there were several uh, other types of operations that were happening that couldn't always be mapped to that you know, input artifacts and output artifacts approach. And, and you see that with things like software builds of materials that can be expressed as you know, the new contextual intro data stations. You also see that with other very common operations in software supply chains, like uh, you run a test of your software or you get a code review of your software, right? And, and so we, the Intoto attestation framework uh, allows you to express all of this more contextual information. And as of a couple or maybe three weeks ago, uh, the attestation framework reached the version 1.0 milestone. It was developed as a sub-project within the Intoto umbrella uh, so that the focus could purely be on how, you know, the added, on how to express the claims alone without you know, breaking uh, existing users of link metadata and things like that. Um, so the, that's, I, I'm gonna give a super quick uh, introduction to what the uh, what the what an attestation looks like. The outermost layer is typically a signing envelope of some variety. It, it uh, recommends the use of DISI or the that simple signing envelope. Uh, the attestation begins at what's labeled as the statement layer, which identifies the one or more subjects or resources that the attestation applies to. The type of attestation it is, or I should say predicate, which is the contextual part. Uh, and the predicate itself. So, you know, in the case of an, S an, an SPDX document, you'd have that corresponding predicate type and the contents of the SPDX document as the predicate. And uh, in the case of salsa provenance, you'd, you'd have that as the predicate type and provenance as the uh, predicate itself. Uh, we also have a number of what, what we call wetted predicates uh, for things like, uh, you know, I'm going to pick up a couple that I haven't named so far, but things like capturing the results of runtime traces of something that some operation in your software supply chain, uh, test results, uh, Salsa's verification summary is also captured as an intoto predicate. And we've got a couple of new ones in the review for things like code review results and things like that. And uh, there's a group of people, the intoto attestation framework maintainers who are who you know? Who who are uh, who who help with reviewing uh, and wetting these predicates to ensure that they fit a broad variety of use cases and can be uh, useful for different consumers across various organization boundaries. And I should note that, uh, like I said, the attestation framework was uh, a sub project within the Intoto umbrella. And it was introduced as, uh, and we have a formal way to, you know, introduce such subprojects that are going to modify the specification, and we call them Intoto enhancements. They're Intoto's equivalent of like a PEP or whatever. So uh, you'd see that I6 is the one that actually introduced the attestation framework and was accepted a couple of weeks ago, right around when we hit version 1.0 with the attestation framework. So uh, that was. You know, the major changes that, that have kind of already happened and kind of stabilized with version 1.0 with the 
how do we express claims of what's happening in our software supply chain. So I'm going to talk a bit more about uh, what we're doing now to enhance internal layouts to support verifying attestations. Uh, so going back to what we had with less, like, you know, up, up to and including version 1.0, because the internal specification primarily supported the use of linked metadata and not all of the contextual internal attestations, uh, the layout was also very tailored with like, you know, a set of capabilities that allowed for verifying, you know, uh, enumerating all of the steps that needed to be performed in, this, in, this, in, the, in a particular supply chain and the functionaries, or the P, because, which is a general term we use to describe you know, people or bots, uh, performing each of those steps. And uh, it, it focused on verifying the flow of artifacts as they moved from one step to the next. So uh, Carol, or in this, in this case, who's performing the build step, could verify that, uh, you know, it, it, you, could, you could verify that Carol received the right set of sources from Bob, who, you know, checked out something from the version control system and things like that. And you could also verify that as Carol built the software, like the piece of software, maybe she just run make, right? Uh, she only modified the file she was supposed to or created the file she was supposed to and, and so on. We are, we're, uh, so with the, uh, with the enhancement I just talked about, right? Uh, we were working to update layouts to support the, uh, to, to support all of the same uh, capabilities that I just described but we're also adding in capabilities within the layout itself to make other, to set other kind of constraints against different artifacts in the supply chain or the steps as they're happening. Uh, I, I mentioned as an example of a wetted predicate a few minutes ago, uh, the runtime trace predicate. So you could not only capture link metadata and salsa provenance for your builds and so on, but at the same time also capture the runtime trace of your build and then set a constraint examining that runtime trace attestation to see if any network calls were made during the build process. So you could say, okay, my runtime trace tells me that you know, no network calls were made, so I know that that particular build was performed in an environment without outbound calls and things like that. So we're, this is a work in progress. It's, also, it's being introduced as another in total enhancement, which is IT10. It is focused, uh, it, it's, it's still uh, quite an early, uh, it's, it's in a, well, I don't want to say very early state, but uh, it's, it's in the open PR state, and we're actively working with a number of stakeholders to ensure that uh, it, it correctly bridges uh, all of the requirements and uh, it, it remains backwards compatible with the layouts that we had before as well. So post version 1.0, the idea is that the in total specification, excuse me, <coughs> The Intoto specification will uh, use the attestation framework, the, the subproject, as its mechanism for expressing claims about the software supply chain execution, and it'll use uh, enhanced uh, capabilities from H10 for uh, layouts that allow you to verify all of the different things that I just talked about, with which which are captured in your uh, uh, attestations. Uh, so we have a number of implementations or libraries that we maintain in uh, Python, Go, Java, and Rust. Um, they're, they're, they have, they're, they're featured complete to varying degrees because we've had a number of enhancements over the years that haven't been implemented in all of the different implementations. But you know, if you, if you want to see some capability in a particular implementation, we're always open to pull requests and happy to work with you to make that happen. I also want to highlight Witness, which is a community-driven open source in total implementation. It was de developed uh, after the introduction of the Intoto attestation framework, so it's focused purely on Intoto attestations. It also has its uh, it, it also has a derivative of the Intoto layout uh, schema called Witness policies that we're again trying to bridge the with I10. To get, uh, you know, we're trying to have the new layout schema bridge witness policies as well as the original in total layouts so that they all remain compatible and, and witnesses. And, and so we're working with the folks at Testify Sec who built witness to uh, uh, ensure that witness is also going to be compatible with the I10 layout schema. 
Uh, with that, I want to play a quick demo from Cole Kennedy of TestifySec, one of the developers behind Witness and an Intoto steering committee member. Uh, let's hope this works. Okay. Hey, thank you. Now, one thing we're really trying to do with Witness and Archivista is make the whole process of creating and consuming attestations much, much, much easier. So I'm going to show you two tools uh, that we recently developed and released uh, to help to this end. Uh, the first tool is called the Witness Run Action. Now, this action allows you to configure and run Witness as part of your software uh, supply chain uh, very easily by just defining um, some some uh, variables. And the second tool I'm going to talk about today is called the policy tool. This will eventually make its way into uh, into the witness binary. Right now, it's pretty experimental. It's got some rough edges, but it still provides a ton of value. You know, one of the biggest complaints that we hear about in total is how hard it is to create layouts and enforce policy uh, on the attestations out that we create. Uh, we've done some work uh, with uh, the witness policy language to kind of help with that. Uh, there's some additional work going on with I-10 that should uh, alleviate some more of those as well as make it uh, into the official spec. Uh, we're really excited to be working with, with uh, Dethia on I-10 um, as we continue that process. Uh, but anyways, this policy tool, what it does is it takes attestations that were created in previous pipeline runs and allows you to define specific variables and attributes that you want to stay, stay the same uh, on all the future pipeline runs, right? Um, so there's certain things like values in the JDBT, the owner of the repo, et cetera, that are the really easy, low-hanging fruit that can really add a lot of security to your supply chain artifacts. Um, so what we've done is we've started working with the uh, Hewlett Packard team that is developing Galdrail. Um, this is part of the Spiffy Spire project. Spiffy Spire offers federation, uh, but it's really tough to manage and they're trying to solve some of the issues around that. Uh, so that's what this project is doing. Uh, but let's go into exactly what we're doing and the supply chain security side. Um, go ahead and make this guy a little smaller here. Um, so. We'll go ahead and go into the actions. And you can see we have a, a couple pipeline runs that are going on here. So let's just pick one. We'll go into the release, um, go down into the workflow file, and we can see exactly how we are running um, our, um, our Go releaser on this instrumented with Witness. So it makes it really, really easy. Look at this. So you can see we're using our latest version of the Witness run action. Make sure you have the latest version. There's some bug fixes that, that we included um, recently, but I'll, I want to key in on uh, these uh, with statements here, right? So the first one is enable SIG store. So if you're going to create an attestation, you need some way to trust that attestation. And unless you want to deal with key management, um, you should probably use SIG store or, um, you know, some other tools that may be out there um, and give us a key provider. But SIG store right now is really the tool to be using if you're going to be doing key list signing. So, so that's what we use here. And then secondly, uh, we're gonna enable Archivista. So we need a, a, some place to store, manage, discover all this, all this attestation data that we're creating. Uh, we tried using Recore for this, but there's some issues with uh, discoverability and it's really not designed for this use case, right? It's designed more for ver verifying that an attestation is valid rather than discovering a bunch of attestations. Third, uh, we're gonna set trace to true on this. That means that we're going to run a uh, ptrace trap on the command that we execute and grab all the files that were touched or written um, during this process. In future versions of Witness, we'll also be grabbing all the network calls as well. And then you have the step, and you know, we gotta name our step um, that goes into our policy. And then we finally, we have the command that we're gonna run, right? Nothing special there. This exact same command you'd be running uh, on this build machine if you didn't have, uh, if you were not using this Witness run action. Okay. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and drop down to the command line. Um, and we're gonna start doing some stuff. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, I wanna paste in some environment variables or some variables here um, to set the stage. Uh, so we can see we have our, uh, these gitoids, these identifiers, uh, and this, this is gonna reach out into Archivista, but for different steps during our build process. So we have a commit step, we have a scorecard step, 
a scan step, right? You may have seen that trivia scan. Uh, then we have a container build step as well as a binary. We're, not, we're building this in two different ways. One, we're using GoReleaser, and then we're using KO actually for the container build. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. All right, and then next thing we're gonna do, we need to get the certs from SIGStore. So we're gonna copy, we're, we're gonna go ahead and download those. I wrote a little script to, to do that there. For the sake of time. And then next, right, we're gonna use that policy tool that I talked about, right? And you can see we're passing in those SIGStore certificates, we're passing in those attestation IDs. And what this policy tool is gonna do is gonna reach out into Archivista and grab all those attestations that, that we're defining here. And then it's gonna look and inspect some of the values of what those uh, attestations are and create a policy based on that, right? All right, bam, now we got a policy. Uh, one thing I forgot, the, let's let's actually go uh, and look at what the sticky.yaml looks like, right? So right here, we're defining, okay, in this type of an attestation, we have this GitHub attestation, we want these values to stay the same from pipeline run to pipeline run to pipeline run to pipeline run, right? If, if they change, that means we probably gotta go look at something. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll show you what that policy actually looks like. So this actually encoded um, some Rego policies within uh, that policy document. We're gonna use JQ to go look at those real quick. Bam, now you can see, right? These are things that we wanna stay the same with that artifact from pipeline run to pipeline run. So, so we go ahead and do that. All right, so now we have a policy file. We're actually going to need to sign that policy file. So I'm gonna go generate some keys here. And then we're gonna use a witness sign tool or witness sign uh, directive to actually sign that policy. Uh, so now, right, let's actually go and verify this commit that we're on. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and you can see get rev par. So this commit is already part of that previous pipeline run that we have. So we actually have, have ran out of the steps. So this is a valid commit that's gone through every single step that we'd find in our in our uh, software supply chain. And you can see that evidence right there. Uh, one of the things that we did do in that pipeline is we actually built a container image. Right? And you can see right, we're passing in the uh, image ID of the container, right? not, the, not the manifest, but we're passing the image ID as a subject. Uh, that's a SHA-256 hash. That's, uniquely identifies that container or that image. And you can see, right, verification succeeded. All right, let's go ahead and uh, and actually do a, uh, a different uh, verification. Uh, so when we ran GoReleaser, we created a bunch of, of binaries. Uh, so now we're gonna go ahead and look at everything that's in our disk folder. Now, I downloaded these ahead of time, uh, but this is from that release, or from uh, the that build page in GitHub. Uh, we unzip that into this folder. And now what we can do is we can go verify every single one of those files against that policy we created, all right? And you can see those all succeed. Now this is something your customer would do. This is something you put in a mission controller before you let these workloads go into a Kubernetes cluster. Um, or what you can also do is add it at, as a last st step on your CI pipeline. So that way we know that none of this stuff has been tampered with in between the individual steps. And it also gives us this, this assurance that our artifacts do meet the policy that we specify. And they weren't built in, on some devs machine sitting underneath their desk or on a, uh, on a build farm that, that we don't trust that may be malicious. Um, well, thank you very much. Cool, so a uh, couple of Quick updates from what's been happening on the Intodo community side of things. Uh, the biggest piece of news is a change in the governance model of the project. Previously, we had what we call a consensus builder, who was uh, Santiago Torres Arias. Mm -hmm. You can see in the screen up there. And, and earlier this year, he proposed that Intodo move to a steering committee member. I also recognize that I introduced Cole as a steering committee member before I actually told you about the Intoto steering committee member. Sorry, Intoto steering committee. So uh, the Intoto community voted in, uh, voted on, you know, uh, the folks who were nominated uh, by the community or by themselves and picked uh, five people to form the first steering committee earlier this month. 
and uh, we have a healthy mix of academia and uh, industry, which I'm personally very pleased about. Uh, and and uh, we've, we've got you know representation from folks who are using Intoto today in their pipelines. We've got representation from folks who are doing research that that goes into Intoto at universities. So, and and you know building to cool things like Witness, where we have coal. So yeah, really pleased uh, to introduce all of these folks as our student committee. And I want to you know in general give a shout out to. The Intoto community, we've had a number of invaluable contributions from so many folks over the last several years, multiple Intoto enhancements, multiple contributions to our various implementations and integrations that, that we maintain. A lot of, uh, you know, as, as, that is, as the attestation framework came to be, they, a number of predicates were proposed by members of the community. So that's that's all of this has been really great, and and all of this is also you know directly translated to a large number of integrations and adoptions. Like we've we've got integrations with other CNCF projects like Keylime and Spiffy and Tough. Uh, we are you know we have predicates that support open standards like S bombs like S SPDX and Cyclone DX, as well as Salsa, where you know Salsa recommends the use of internal attestations for. Uh, expressing claims like currently prominence, possibly more in future. Uh, we work on the reproducible builds project where you can use in total metadata to, to verify that two isolated rebuilders were, uh, you know, built the same were bit for bit equivalent packages and, and you can use in total metadata to verify that the rebuilders you trust actually signed off on those builds and and that and through that we work with the Debian and Arch Linux folks uh, and at NYU we maintain a rebuilder for Arch Linux packages and at Purdue I think there's a Debian rebuilder like similarly being maintained and and all, both of them emit in total metadata so you know you could uh, if, if, if you're a user of one of those distributions you could also plug this into that uh, a large number of uh, open source projects and systems that you know either use in Toto or we have integrations for, with, you know, popular CI systems like Jenkins, uh, te uh, Tecton Chains for Tecton, and, and uh, integrations in Quark, which consumes in Toto metadata, and all of this has also meant that we've been adopted by a number of organizations, right? And uh, whether it's Datadog who use both Duff and Intoto in their pipelines, or uh, Toradex, which is uh, which is one that we're actively working on right now, uh, that's working in the embedded space and the Internet of Things space for uh, generating attestations for the images they develop for their boards. We're also formalizing how we talk about all of these. Like it's 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 nice to be able to show off all of those logos, but we also want others in the community, possibly people who are new to the community, to learn how a particular integration works or learn how someone's using Intoto in their pipeline. So you know we're trying to collect uh, brief descriptions of how some of the folks uh, you just saw, some of the organizations and projects you just saw use Intoto or how you can use Intoto within uh, a system like that. Uh, if you were listed on the previous slide, but don't see yourselves on this one. Please feel free to reach out with you know a brief description of how you use Intoto or how we can you know talk about that integration. Uh, finally, Intoto is still you know quite actively maintained and developed at uh, academic institutions like Purdue, NYU, and NJIT. We are also active participants for the last several years in Google Summer of Code, so we have a. You know, we have a history of mentorship. We, I can't remember a time in the last several years we haven't had an undergraduate student or a master's student working on various aspects of Intoto and contributing to it alongside all of the other members of the community in the industry. So, and, and so if you're new to the space and you'd like to start you know, contributing, feel free to reach out. We're very welcoming, even if I say so myself. Uh, so join us. We meet on the first Friday of every month for a community meeting. We're on the CNCF Slack on Hash and Toto. That's our main channel. We've got a few others in there for sub-projects and the like. We are. We also have a very non-active presence on IRC. If you do want to reach out by IRC, we will respond. But uh, not a lot of people do that. 
Uh, you can also use uh, our mailing list. You can feel free to join our mailing list, and you can find us on GitHub with, at the Intoto organization. Uh, thank you. Questions? Um, hi, thanks for the presentation. Um, can you elaborate on how Tough and Intoto uh, integrate? I have know a little bit about what Tough does, but not so much about this. So, what is the common picture? Sure. Um, so, I want to start off by saying that Tough and Intoto are sister projects, and a lot of the same people were instrumental in developing them, especially in the early days. Uh, Intoto uses stuff to securely distribute the layout, the, you know, the policies I was talking about, and the keys used to verify that layout. Uh, so it essentially allows you to use stuff as a root of trust for your Intoto layout and all of the other metadata. You can also use stuff to associate a particular set of Intoto metadata with the artifact you're distributing from your Tough repository. So uh, we've, we've got a fairly uh, detailed, we've got a couple of fairly detailed write-ups as in total enhancements, and I'm happy to you know share the link with you if if you if you come off with me. Uh, but uh, and and one of them also detail Datadog's deployment of exactly that setup. Of yeah. Okay, cool. So the the tough layout is kind of uh, published in the ar archiver or ar archiver or whatever. Archivista, uh, Archivista, Archiv yeah. Archivista is building in tough support into. Like they're, they're, they're building tough support into Archivista as well. Mm. So, uh, but I don't know all of the details of you know, that, that particular roadmap, but the current deployments don't use it with Archivista. It's just, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Hi, I have a question. Thank you for your presentation. I entered this room having a small knowledge about, or oh, small knowledge about uh, Cosine Six Store, about uh, Connoisseur, which can uh, verify the signature of a container uh, uh, at runtime. Uh, you have also Six Store policy controller, which does the same. Uh, I know that software bit of material is becoming a big deal. Uh, I know that. In total, uh, can help me uh, achieve uh, protecting myself co against uh, attack from the supply chain. But I, I think I, I miss the connection between all the project. The previous question was about uh, the update framework. Uh, am I right? T tough. Uh, you mentioned witness, uh, and I, I think I need a, a clearer view. So how can I get this clearer view of uh, this constellation of uh, projects? That's a good question, and I think I'm going to take that at like two levels. At, at a higher level, I think one of the things we've been discussing is uh, more of a landscape approach to explain how all of these different projects come together, because a lot of what you just talked about are kind of complementary projects that you'd probably want to use, you know, together. Together, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so at, at a lower level, yeah. So I'll, like taking the example of Six Store, right? You could use Six Store to to, you know, you can use SixStore to, to sign your internal metadata. You could also store your internal metadata on Recar if you so choose. And so that, that, it really helps with the, you know, key and identity management and to an extent the metadata storage aspect. And, uh, but you'd still need Intoto for the end-to-end, -end, every step in my supply chain kind of verifications. Okay. Go ahead. And for, for example, does it make sense to say, I, I want to uh, verify the Intoto attestation at runtime like I would verify the signature of a container at runtime? You know, just before the Kubernetes uh, uh, scheduler schedule your container, you mm -hmm. can add a webhook to say, if this is not signed, I do not want to uh, instantiate it. So yeah. does that make sense? Yeah, we, we do have like, uh, do I need to take a look at it? Uh, it's been a while since I looked at that particular integration, but we do have like an admission controller hook to verify internal metadata prior to deploying something. Thank you very much for your answer. Cool. Anyone else? Cool. Thanks. I'll, you know, feel free to come up to me. There are a number of other Intoto folks here. Uh, happy to answer and chat. 